Are you thinking of switching to Linux from Windows or Mac OS, but feel overwhelmed by the number of choices? Don't worry, you're not alone. With hundreds of Linux distributions out there, choosing the right one can feel like navigating a maze. Some aim to be super easy to use, like Ubuntu or Linux Mint. Others aim to be cutting edge and customizable, like Arc or Fedora. Some are just built for gaming, privacy, or reviving old hardware. Not all Linux distros are created equal. Some are made to be super user-friendly, others give you total control, but expect you to know your way around the terminal. Some distros are light and fast, perfect for old laptops, others are built for powerful machines and compact with features. If you're new to Linux, like just downloaded your first ISO file yesterday, some Linux distros are very beginner-friendly, while others are more suited for advanced users who like to tinker. If you're just starting out, you want something that works right out of the box. You don't want to spend hours figuring out how to connect to Wi-Fi or install your favorite apps. That's where distros like Linux Mint, Ubuntu or Zorin OS come in handy. These are often called getaway distros because they make the transition from Windows or Mac OS super smooth. Linux Mint, for example, has a very familiar interface, kind of like Windows 7 or 10. The learning curve is minimal because most of the interactions feel instantly recognizable. It comes with everything you need. Office apps, media players, system tools, ready to go. This means that right after installation you can browse the web, play videos, listen to music and edit documents without having to download or configure anything extra. It even comes with a handy utilities like a software updater and driver manager to keep your system secure and stable. It's stable, polished and has a huge community behind it. The community is one of the biggest advantages because if you ever run into a problem, there's probably already a forum post, a YouTube tutorial or a wiki article explaining exactly how to fix it. And if you can find the answer, you can simply ask. Linux Mint's community is known for being especially friendly to beginners. Zorin OS is another great option, especially if you're coming from Mac OS or want a sleek modern look. Its design is clean and minimal, with smooth animations and a professional feel. Even little details like the icon set and default font make it feel a premium operating system. You can even switch layouts to mimic Windows or Mac OS right out of the box. This is perfect if you want that familiar home base while still exploring Linux. And the Zorin Appearance app lets you tweak your desktop in just a few clicks. No technical knowledge required. Zorin OS has a strong focus on performance, it runs well on older hardware, and if you got a laptop from 2012 collecting dust in a drawer, Zorin OS could give it a second life. We can't talk about beginner-friendly distros without mentioning Ubuntu. Ubuntu has been the face of Linux for new users for over a decade. It's backed by Canonical, a company that provides long-term support and regular updates, so you know it's not going to disappear overnight. Ubuntu Software Center is one of the easiest ways to install applications. You just search for what you want, click install and you're done. It also has excellent hardware compatibility, meaning your Wi-Fi, sound card and graphics usually work right after installation. One of the strengths of Ubuntu is its vast documentation. If you search how to do something in Ubuntu, you will almost always find a detailed step-by-step -step guide, sometimes straight from Ubuntu's own official help pages. By the way, a quick side note, I also have a full step-by-step -step tutorials how to install Linux Mint, Zorin OS, Ubuntu and other Linux distributions on my channel, so you can find them in my Linux playlist on my channel. Make sure to check it out. If you've used Linux before and want something a bit more flexible, you can look into distros like Fedora, Manjaro or Endeavor OS. Fedora stays close to upstream Linux and gives you access to newer technologies, which makes it great for developers. Manjaro is based on Arc Linux, but removes a lot of the complexity, so you can get the power of Arc with more convenience. And then there is Arc Linux or Gentoo. These are for experienced users only. You install everything manually, which means you learn a ton, but it's not something I'd recommend if you just want to use your computer rather than build it from scratch. So here's the bottom line. If you're a beginner, go with something like Linux Mint, Zorin OS or Ubuntu. If you've got some experience, 
Try Manjaro, Fedora or even Endeavor OS. And if you love full control and don't mind some reading and tinkering, then maybe Arc or Gentoo is for you. Just know what you're getting into. The second big factor when choosing a distro is your hardware. Because not every distro will run well on every machine, especially if you're using an older laptop or a low-spec desktop. If your computer is older, maybe you've got 2-4 to four gigabytes of RAM or an older processor, you're going to want a lightweight distro. Something that doesn't use a lot of system resources, but still gives you a decent user experience. Some great choices here are Xubuntu, a lighter version of Ubuntu using the XFCE desktop, Lubuntu, even more lightweight using LXQT, and NTX Linux, which can even run on ancient hardware with under 1 GB of RAM. These distros strip out the flashy animations and fancy desktop effects so your machine can focus on just doing the job. Perfect for breathing new life into older laptops and desktops. On the other hand, if you have a fairly new or powerful system, you can go with a distro that uses a more feature-rich desktop environment like GNOME or KDE Plasma. For example, Pop OS is optimized for newer hardware and has great support for NVIDIA and AMD graphics. Fedora is often on the cutting edge and works really well with modern laptops and workstations. Nobara and Bezide are designed with gamers in mind and they come pre-tweaked for performance, great if you have a gaming rig. One more thing, some distros offer better driver support out of the box, especially for proprietary graphics drivers. If you're using NVIDIA graphics, look for distros like Pop OS or Zorin OS that offer dedicated ISOs with drivers included. Otherwise, you might find yourself stuck at the black screen after installation, which is not fun. So to recap, if you have old or weak hardware, go with something like Xubuntu, Lubuntu, NTX Linux or any other Linux distribution that offer XFCE desktop environment. For example, Linux Mint XFCE. If you have modern or gaming hardware, look into Pop OS, Fedora, Nobara or Bezite. And always check for driver support, especially if you're using NVIDIA or newer hardware. Anyway, this is it for today. I hope this video was helpful to you. Let me know in the comment section below which Linux distro do you think of trying first. That will be interesting to know. And if you're into gaming and would like to know which Linux distro works the best for gaming, I have a separate video how to choose the best Linux gaming distro. So if you're into gaming, make sure to check it out. And if you find this video helpful, please support with a like. I appreciate it very much. And if it's your first time to the channel, take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. This will help me a lot to grow my channel and bring you more helpful, interesting videos. And if you like what I'm doing and would like to support my channel, you can always use super thanks or simply buy me a coffee. I'm gonna put the link in the description. But this is it for today. I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.